In today's video, we're going to work on one of the most basic, but also one of the most important elements of a website, the nav bar. Yes, the beautiful nav bar. Most sites have it. Every site probably does have it, as it should, because it's where all the users can go to to interact and navigate a website and find out the information that they're looking for. And Webflow makes it really easy to make a responsive nav bar that adjusts with screen sizes and will lay out properly. So I built a responsive nav bar for a little makeshift Oscars website. So I got this nice landing page for the Oscars, and it has this responsive nav bar up top. It's got these cool little hover effects here with the, the links. And when you resize it, it'll turn into the hamburger menu for smaller screen sizes. And it has the same drop down, the same things, and it'll adjust accordingly. So stick around if you want to learn how to do this, because you probably should, because you're going to use it all the time. Let's do it. So here I am in my site. I already built out the basics of all of this. So like I said, just a simple little Oscars website. Love the Oscars, they're coming up this week. Hope you're all watching, hope you caught up. I watched Minari last night, definitely recommend. I think I'm caught up in all my best picture noms. But so you'll see here, I just have a simple kind of sliding navigation. If I click preview, it cycles through all of them automatically, but you can also scroll. And just has the word Oscars appearing over. It has these, they don't actually go anywhere, but when you hover, you've got these little kind of arrows indicating to the user you can click this and I'm not going to expand on the website any further this is just for the navigation purposes so first thing I'm going to do really easy I'm going to make sure we're in our body I'm going to go to plus and I'm going to add this navbar element Webflow already has it for you so it's very easy and it pushes it at the bottom there but we're going to move this to the top obviously because we want this right up there wonderful First thing I want to do, I'm going to add a little background color to this because I want it to fit the theme of our site, so I'll just make it a nice deep black. I'm going to change the text color of the nav links to white so we can read those. Oops, that's background color. Here we go. And I can do that for all of them if I'd like. And we'll give them the same class name in a second, but I'll just get started with this. So one thing that I like to do is they already have set dimensions on this container for your nav bar, which are very helpful and it keeps everything centered and aligned nicely. But I tend to like mine a little bit wider. So a nice thing you could do, if I just go to the container element here, I'm just gonna name this navbar container. You can go to max width here, and you can just adjust this. So I usually make mine around 1400 pixels. That way it expands a little bit. It will still scale nicely, and you can even add some padding, because now you'll see how it touches that. So I'm gonna add, let's see, 20 pixels on the left and right maybe 10 on the top and bottom. I can also just hit hold alt. There we go. And now it's still kind of centered there, but it gives a little wider view because a lot of people have big desktops, right? There we go. So let's just look at the structure of this really quick here, right? So when we created our nav bar, this is the element that it gave us. It's got nav bar. It's the main box where it all lives, right? And then the next element you will see is the nav bar container. That's the thing that we just resized. So that is the container inside and the container elements in Webflow already have set margins on either side. So it centers the content so the user is not looking back and forth very long because that's not easy on the eyes. So our nav bar is in there. And then the next thing you'll see, we've got a brand link. So this is a little link container and this is where you will usually put a logo for a company or the company brand and you put an image in there and we'll do that ourselves. So in with our brand link, I'm just gonna click plus and I'm gonna click image. While we're here, I can just do this. I've got a little Oscars logo here. I can change this to logo. I can change the width and the height to something like, I don't know, 50. We'll see what that looks like. Looks all right for now. And you can play with spacing a little bit. You can give this a margin on the top, maybe like, oh, that's way too much, 20, 10. And it lives in the link block, right? So when you go to the settings of your link block, you can tell it where you want it to go. You can bring it to a section of the page. You can bring it to a new page itself, whatever you'd like. But for now, ours is not going to go anywhere. So we're just using it for the image purposes. So that's our brand. And then the next thing you'll see is our nav menu inside here. And that is just the div where all of our nav links uh, live. So those are all the links here. And they all have different classes right now, just generated automatically, one through three. And I'm going to change the structure of this a little bit. I'm actually just going to delete them because I'm going to focus on one. And then when I set the class name, I can copy and paste it. And then everything will have the same class. So when we adjust things in the future, everything will change all at the same time and we don't have to do it individually. In our nav menu, I'm actually gonna add a div 
a div within a div. Get a little Inception-y here. Ooh, Inception, maybe I'll do a video about that. I don't know what I would make for that, but stay tuned. Our div, I'm gonna call this navlink div. And I'm gonna put the navlink inside here. And you'll see why in a second while I'm nesting these kind of divs. And then with this, I'm gonna add another div within this div. A dream within a dream. <laughs> We're gonna name this nav uh, link underline. Because if you go back here really quick, you'll see when I hover, I've got that nice yellow bar that appears when you hover over it. It's just a rectangle div that I made with the background color, and it's got some interaction properties, but it's living under the link itself. And they're all living within its own div square here, if that makes sense. And they're just stacked on top of each other. So that's what we're kind of building out. So I'll give this a background color so we can see what we're working with. Just use gold, there we go. And it's obviously very large, so we're just gonna change the height to three pixels. And now you'll see how it lives under there. But I'm gonna change some of the spacing for this. We've got our nav link. I'm gonna change the padding. We don't want it to be that much. Maybe I'll make it 10, just so it's underneath there. I'm gonna change this text to Palatino Lino type. I kinda of like that. I'm gonna make the font size. That's too big. Let's make it like maybe 18. So this has a class of nav link. Underneath is the nav link underline, and they all live within the navlink div. So you see how we create a little box. It just has the text and it has the navlink underline beneath it. So now I can just go over here to our navlink div and I'm gonna copy this and paste it. Four times is good, but we don't want them stacked, right? We want them to align on the same line together like a navigation bar. So I'm gonna to go to where our navlinks live, which is our nav menu, and I'm gonna click flex. And that pushes them all onto the same line. So now you'll see it looks more like a navigation bar, obviously, which is great, that's what we're going for. But these are also connecting a little bit. So we're gonna add some space in between each of these divs. So let's make sure we're in our nav link div here. And I'm just gonna add some margin on the left and right sides of about, let's say, eight pixels, just to give it some breathing room there. And now you can actually change the text here. So what did I have up here? I have nominees, history, museum, and explore. So this one will be nominees the history of the Oscars, the Oscars Museum, which I'm so excited for. It's been years in the making. I used to live in LA, but now I don't, and I'm gonna have to fly back to go to that museum when it opens, because it looks pretty epic. It's got a history of all the things, lots of memorabilia. If you're a movie nerd and Oscars fan, definitely gonna try to check it out. So if anybody gets to go, let me know. I think it opens in the fall of 2021. Okay, so we've got those there, wonderful. So this underline is actually just the effect that's gonna happen later when we hover, right? So we don't want it seen initially. So what I can do, I can just go to the nav link underline, and when I click hide, it'll hide them all because they all have the same class, right? The next thing, we want this to be responsive, right? So one thing you'll see is that in uh, desktop view, which we're in right now, everything looks fine. Even on smaller desktops, it works. It looks all right, spacing's pretty good. It's coming together. But then when we go to tablet, you see all of a sudden this little hamburger comes up. Well, that's because Webflow already sets the adjustments for you. So this is what you'll see on phones and tablets. You're familiar with this. It's a little drop down menu and it automatically kind of rearranges the formatting. So if you go to the settings of your menu button, you'll see here you can click open menu and then it opens the menu and then you can continue styling. So you can affect it on each of the different viewport sizes. What I want to do here, now that we're on tablet, I'm just going to click the nav menu itself I'm gonna kind of keep the same stylings we had, make sure everything's uniform. I'm gonna make the background black just like we had it. I can do the nav links. I'm gonna make the text center because I like it when it's centered like that. Nav link, I can add a little padding on the bottom here. Let's see here, there we go. I'm gonna make this 20 again. There we go, it spaces it out a little bit. And the menu button here, I want this to be the same background color. All right, and this icon, I'm gonna make the color gold. There we go, it's already coming together. So on our big screen, oops, well, that's because we still have it open, but even though it's gray here, it won't ever exist on this large screen because it doesn't appear unless you're on a certain small viewpoint, so we don't have to worry about that. So if I just click on the menu, I can close this out. Open menu, there we go. So now we've got our desktop view of our nav bar. We've got this, and all of a sudden you'll see it's coming together. I can click preview, and when I grow out here, this is our main nav bar, we got our cursor there. And when we shrink it, our little hamburger appears. And when we click it, there's our drop down. And what's great is that this trickles down. So even though we set it for the tablet, it will trickle down to the other two sizes of landscape and the mobile view. So when I click on landscape, this still appears. 
and mobile, it's still the same thing as we set it. And you can change them as you'd like, but just remember it'll trickle down. So if I change something for this mobile view, this landscape mobile view, it will affect the tap this phone mobile view. And then I'd have to change that individually again if I wanted a different viewport. Next thing I wanna do is add some hover effects. So with our nav link selected, I'm going to go to the hover state here. I'm gonna just change the color of this on hover to gold, beautiful. And then when I go back to the none state, I wanna make sure this has a nice smooth transition into that gold color. So I can click transitions. I can click text color, which is font color right here. I'm gonna have an ease in over a duration of 200 milliseconds. So then when you hover over it, you'll see how it kind of fades in and out. It's not as stark and abrupt, which is nice. And since it, well, I did this under the nav class or the nav link class, they all maintain that styling. And then if I go to this size, it still maintains it even in these because this is all trickling down, it still has the same class. Next thing I wanna show you how to do is that little underline effect, right? Because we have that div ready and now we can apply a little interaction, very simple. Go to our, our nav link and I'm gonna interactions. So I'm gonna create an element trigger for this and it's gonna be on a mouse hover. Select an action, I'm gonna start a new animation and I will call this underline in. So all we wanna do here is make sure you're on the element that you're affecting. We have our nav link underline, which is that little rectangular div, right? It's just three pixels high, it's really tiny. And to get that effect of the growing in and out, like so, you'll see how it just grows from the center. So really all I'm doing is affecting the width. So if I start with the 0% width, and when you hover, it'll grow to a certain percentage, and then when you hover off, it'll go back to zero. So it gives the illusion that it's kind of growing from the center. So I'm going to do size and its initial state, I'm gonna make the width zero. Because you always need an initial state to set the base because then it'll have two values to grow from. So if you don't have two values, sometimes it won't work and it'll give you a little caution error. But this, we just make sure we have zero as the initial state. And then I'm gonna have another size property. And I'm gonna make the width 80%. And now it'll be not the full length of the div, but it'll be 80%, so it's a little has a little more padding on each side. And that will happen over a duration of 0.2 seconds, just to make it a little speedy. Ah, and I was wrong. Really quick, let's just go back. We don't want this to be hidden. We just want to change the width. So if I just make the width zero, I can make this display block. The nav link underline is there, but it has no width, so you can't see it. So this way we don't have to change a hide show property when we're doing the interaction. But if we go back to our interaction really quick, now when we go and do this, we'll do the underline in, make sure it's going from zero to 80. Now when I preview this, so you'll see here, we do get our little underline effect. It's not quite coming from the center like we like it yet. So to change that, and then I make the nav link div flex vertical center. Everything will be aligned in the center and it should grow outwards. There we go. And you'll see when I hover over the rest, it doesn't happen. And that one stays in place. So we're not quite done yet. But back where we were, we have our underline grow interaction selected. And right now, it's only triggering on the selected element. So only that first nominees link. But if I change this to class, and I tell it which class I want it to affect, anything with the nav link class should absorb this. So if I do nominees, then I get history, museum, explore, wonderful. It works for all of them. Now we just wanna create a shrink out kind of effect. So on hover, we did underline grow. And now on hover out, we can add a new animation. And we will call this underline shrink. And all we have to do, make sure we're selected on our nav link underline, change the size back to zero. Save that. So now when we preview, it grows in and out. And it's just a little slow because we forgot to change the duration of that. So underline shrink, let's just make sure it's going 0.2 seconds, the same as the growing. So now we've got the uh, gold hover and we've got the border color on the bottom. Just adds some life to it, makes it a little more dynamic. And the best part is when we go over here, we get our drop down menu. It still affects the other ones as well. Now you could change this. If you don't want that kind of dramatic effect, if you just go down to our underline grow and underline shrink, this is called gore w, sorry, whatever, deal with the typo. Uh, down here we can do trigger on desktop and above, tablet, phone, say we didn't want it to work on the other ones, we can just have that simple hover gold, we don't need the underline for those, I can check those off. And then when I click preview, you'll see on our desktop, we get the nice underline. But then when we shrink to anything with the hamburger menu, 
the lines will disappear and we'll just have that. So that's our Oscar site with our responsive navigation bar with simple little hover effects here on our nav links. Definitely make sure you know how to work with nav bars. They're gonna occur at probably 99% of your projects. So master these, add some creativity, flexibility, make them your own. Try to do some cool different nav bar variations with underlines and effects and your little hamburger menus. Show me what you're working on. If you wanna share something, reach out in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you like this, guys. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.